Hey guys, today's episode is being brought to you by our friends Nezumi Studios that make these incredibly cool watches that I've been wearing. These are super mechanical, very well designed. These are watches made by car guys for car guys. So hit the link down in the description, go check them out, go support what they're doing as they're supporting us. Now, here we go for today's episode. Hey guys, this is Chris Ashton. We met him out at SEMA because we were drooling over his Mustang. <laughs> so start with a 1970 Mustang. Right. Yeah. It wasn't a Mach 1. It wasn't anything rare or historic, you know. Um, yeah. But it was a decently solid driver. At the end of the day, I wanted to build a Trans Am car for the street, you know. So right. in the 69, 70s, they were racing the Mustangs against the Corvettes and the Camaros and all totally. that. Totally. Guys. So I've gone to Laguna Seca, I've gone to the Long Beach Grand Prix, and I watch these guys run, and I'm like, I want one of those that I can drive to work. And yeah. for some reason, I'm really, really attracted to like race cars. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a simplicity to them and a very direct, like there's one thing that they're trying to do. Yeah. You know, go fast around this track. For this car, I wanted to go wide body with it. I wanted right. to fit as much tire under there as I could, which meant fender flares. I've never made a fender flare and I wanted it to be steel. And I, you know, I, I see it on TV. I see it on YouTube. Doesn't look that difficult. So maybe I'll give that a shot. So I made the first one and it wasn't the best. And I started on the front because it's unibody car. Right. If I screwed up a rear fender, there's no easy replacement, right? So if I screw up a front fender, I can buy a replacement front fender. So I started on the front from just the clean factory fender to fender flares welded on and the welds are smoothed. It was 10 hours. 10 hours on each one. On each one. Yeah, which is which I've heard people quote like 400 hours for a set of flares, but for me it was like 40 hours. Wow. So I've heard the same thing, like hundreds of hours to create what you've done here in 40 hours. Yeah, so I don't know what that was. I don't know if that's just a different process or, or that's what, builders but. making a bunch of extra cash. <laughs> <laughs> If I remember correctly, you're running a 315 up front, right? Yeah, 315 up front <laughs> and 345 in the rear. I do a lot of autocrossing. I've been autocrossing for 20 years. Auto yeah. Autocrossing is a lot about lateral grip. Sure. You know, you, you don't need a lot of power. All right, you guys, be prepared. Any purist right now, like take a volume or whatever the current version of that is, you're gonna to wanna to relax, take a deep breath. It's not that big of a deal what he's done here. There's reasoning behind why he did what he did, what we're about to show you here. Seriously, hold up. For any of you guys that don't know what you're looking at here, you are not looking at a Ford motor any longer. <laughs> yeah. So this is a LS3, it's a mm -hmm. seven liter, so it is a 427, it's mm -hmm. an aluminum block. So 625 horsepower, around 560 foot-pounds of torque. The 1970 Mustangs, they had those cool scoops on the, on the front fender extensions, and those were fake back in the day. But for me, I wanted to make those scoops functional, so I made uh, inserts, air scoop inserts behind those, and then uh, route the air in line to the to the carburetor so I get cool air in there. Oh, crazy. So yeah, the motor, the reason behind it was because I didn't want to cut out the shock towers. If you go modern Ford Coyote, you're going to have to cut out the shock towers, put a different K-member in there, do all that stuff. Again, I, I wanted it to kind of appear old school, even yeah. if I was using more modern tech under there. So I wanted to keep the shock towers. Shock towers were in all the race cars. I, I cut out the firewall and I flattened it. So the motor's back two inches. Kind of a subtle thing is the engine bay. Like we, I, I cut a pie slice out of this. They did this on the race cars to make them aerodynamic. They cut an inch out of the front. So the, the fenders pivot down. So the whole car slopes down a little bit, doesn't slopes it? Slopes down, yeah. I thought so. I, I, I couldn't tell if I was just looking at it from a strange perspective or something. Because I had a 70 Mustang when I was a kid. Oh, okay. I remember the car well. I, I thought you did something there. There was always God. something when I would look at the race cars, photos of the race cars. I'm like, why does it look so aggressive? I mean, obviously they have slicks and stuff like that, but there was something else going on. And so yeah. I got on, I started talking to these guys who own these cars and run them. And yeah, Bud Moore and those guys back in the day, they cut, they cut, it wasn't legal, they cut an inch out of the front of the car to drop the nose down an inch to be more aerodynamic. Wow. 
and uh, so cool. they ran him in 69 like that. And that wasn't legal to do? It wasn't legal. <laughs> uh, but nobody noticed in 69. In 70, they cut two inches out, and then they got busted. So ah, it was a little too much. Too much, <laughs> yeah. So what's your transmission in the car? It's a T56 Super Magnum. It's a 411 rear end, okay. so I wanted that for the track and for autocrossing. To, yeah. You know, have a good gear ratio in there, but then I want to be able to get on the freeway you right. know, and cruise to work, so six speed, you know, with that overdrive is just... You're fine. I, you don't even notice the 411s in this car. It just drives like a normal car. Wow. All right, let's go in the interior here. So obviously it's fully caged. This was smart to make life easy to get in and out yeah, of. Yeah, again, just the streetability of it, right? I, wa I want yeah. it to feel like a race car, but I also, the realities are, if it's too hard to drive, if it's too uncomfortable, too hot, then I'm not. I'm just not gonna drive it that totally, often. Totally, dude. Yeah, absolutely. So set up to race though. I mean, like your panels are just aluminum, right? Mm -hmm. Simple, simple. This is actually the first part I've seen on the car where I go, okay, I can tell you made this. Yeah. Like it's not super sophisticated, yeah. perfect. You know, it's it's raw. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's, uh, I haven't used the bead roller very much at all. And so uh, you can tell. And, uh, you know, I finished these on Sunday before a SEMA and it was like, I kind of had one shot because, you know, only so much time in a day. Totally. So I got them on there. They're a little bit rough, uh, but they work and maybe one day I'll go back and when I get better at bead rolling, come back and, get and do it again, but yeah. it's fine. So fully caged. Now that's still stock dash, right? It is a, a stock dash setup. Uh, just with autometer gauges in there. Yeah. Yep, vintage air. And then uh, the race cars would oftentimes have a lot of their switches in a box in the center. Right. Uh, so the, you know, fire extinguisher, AccuSump, that stuff's all set up according to the race. Race car is real similar to that. Are those stock pedals? They are-ish. Ish, Ish uh, yeah. It was an automatic when I got it, so I had to convert it to manual. Yep. And then on the clutch pedal, I had to build a box off to the side of that to run the, the master for the clutch uh, because they didn't run hydraulic clutches back in the Mustangs back in the day. So right. you have to kind of hack that stuff together to make it work now. And then what are the seats you have here? Seats are just from Summit. They're, they're Cobra seats, but they're right. like vintage style. I love that, like I see it's a quick release. But right. that you went with a total old school wood wheel. Is it that's not the stock wheel that came with this it's car? It's not. It? It's a it's a it's a reproduction like a oh, like okay. a modern interpretation of of kind of the old vintage thing. But I loved the okay. wood finish. And, yeah. Uh, that it had you know the Mustang center cap and stuff. Yeah. I have a smaller diameter steering wheel for like when I go autocrossing that right. I just a uh, quick release swap out. Right. But if I'm driving around on the street and stuff, I, I use this one. Yeah. Because it's, it's got no, that it's vintage so, feel. Dude, it's so cool. It was one of the things that caught my eye at SEMA seeing it through the window was like, you've gone this far with this car and yet you've got a friggin' wood wheel in there. I just <laughs> thought that was so cool, dude. I, I'm completely tripped out for, I mean, I swear to God, if it was built by a custom car builder, I'd still be blown away. I just can't believe this car was built in this setting here other than painting the damn car. I swear to God, dude, I'm blown away by that. If I remember correctly, when we were at SEMA talking to you, you said you learned to TIG weld so you could do this. Yeah, because it's aluminum. I wanted to make it lightweight, but you can't really MIG weld aluminum. Not very well anyway. Okay. So yeah, that meant getting a TIG welder and practicing and trying to figure out how to <laughs> weld on aluminum. So they're not, they're not the best. Uh, welds in the world, but they work. Right. I mean, you could totally pick it apart if you want to geek out on it, right? But again, when you when you bring it back to the, you're not a custom car builder, and it it does, it's not like it looks awful. You know what I mean? It's right. it's it's functional, and a lot of it is like the car is a lot nicer than I ever intended it to be. The idea was always it was a race car, and and in racing, you don't really give a shit what it looks like. Like no. as long as it's functional, that's what you're concerned about, right? It yeah. Just, it ends up that the end result looks badass, but they don't really, they don't, they're not, their intent is not to make it look badass. Their intent is to go fast. It's just a byproduct, you know? So, Absolutely. Last question. What's, what's oh the yeah. ruffian Mustang? All the major car builders, they name the cars. Yep. I see it on TV. I see it on YouTube, right? Oh now. yeah. And so I was like, well, I gotta have a name for the car. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, geez, what would I name it? I was like, oh, it's a Mustang and it's a race car. Mustang's a horse. 
I'm going to go look at racehorses. And so then I started digging into the history of like the, the different famous racehorses. And there was yeah. one, one named the Ruffian uh, that was, you know, one of the best racers ever, one of the best racehorses ever. And then the name Ruffian, it's like, okay, well, this car looks like it kicks ass and is made for going fast and being brutal. And it also has a Chevy motor in it. And so I don't really care what you think whether you like it or not. And it has that attitude. So for me, yeah. it was kind of the right attitude, but then there was also a little bit of like history and inspiration and stuff yeah. as well. So that's where it comes from. Yeah. So the final thing we're gonna say is, it's time to go for a drive, you guys. So let's go for a little rip. Awesome. driving for years you can oh, yeah. tell yeah 20 years of auto cross some real sense of accomplishment to, to do your first ground up build and have it come out this good. All right, you guys, that's it for our shoot of this extraordinary 70 Mustang. How cool is this car, right? And again, the idea that this is done in this garage right here, just truly incredible, man. I I'm stoked that we got to shoot this car today. I hope you guys had fun with this one. Thanks as always for hanging and watching and supporting what we do. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.